hello again, everyone here locally. My name is Jacob McElroy. I'm a developer at Octeto. Um, and the title of my talk is, With Preview Environments, Everyone is Invited to the Party. Um, and that's an interesting title to try and get accepted here. But it, what, it, what it means is, is uh, by introducing preview environments to your review process, you're able to integrate more, a more diverse set of roles uh, and include as many people as possible in your review process so that you ultimately have a better product and a better team. Right, so um, same with parties. The more people you invite, usually, as long as they're the right people, the, uh, the better the party, right? So um, to accomplish this, first I'm gonna define preview environments. I'm gonna talk about what I mean when I say preview environments. Uh, maybe you've never heard of it, maybe you have. It's one of those things that's probably defined differently depending on how it's implemented and how you've used it in the past, but we'll define what I'm talking about when I when I mention that, and that'll shape sort of what benefits you receive. Um, then we will compare the review process, traditional review process, and that with the preview environment. We'll compare and contrast and just review that so that we know sort of where we sit there. And then I'll talk about the team benefits. And this is where um, I think is the most valuable here. Uh, there's, we could talk about how it's implemented, uh, but but how it benefits the team, I think, is probably the most important aspect because it's the why. So let's talk about what a preview environment is. We are defining today, for the context of this talk, we're defining a preview environment as a full deployment of your application that is deployed in conjunction with the pull request. You open up a pull request, and then you have a preview environment. So. It is deployed from the branch that is under review, at least at least the code, maybe all the code and the automation to deploy that code is all in the same branch. But the point is, is that the preview environment is effectively using the code that, that you're putting under pull request that you want to have reviewed. And when the review is complete, it all, all the resources are cleaned up. So it's an ephemeral environment that is specific for the review process. It, it's all, it's, it's, not a, it's not a staging, and the reason that's important is because you think about these ephemeral environments or something like that, you may think of a staging environment. Well, it's a little bit different than the typical staging environment, which is after a merge, right? This is before. This is your development branch, okay? So it's very much a development thing, and we have a snippet here of, of sort of something fulfilling all of that. We have a GitHub bot that has said, hey, your preview, your ephemeral preview environment is deployed, and, and here's how you access it right there. And it's a snippet. If you use uh, GitHub's code review process, you, you may notice that as a comment. And that's what that is. So it, it appears there. So that's, that's what a preview environment is. That's what we're defining it as. And since, you know, we're here at KubeCon, um, I feel like I have to mention that this is one of those things that is really not necessarily made possible, but made better, made easy, and made the possibility of preview environments being more ubiquitous between teams is made possible because of the groundwork laid down by Kubernetes cloud development in general. You can go from, from that's Bitbucket logo, you can go from Bitbucket, GitHub, GitLabs, with Kubernetes to a preview environment and get that all connected up because of all the tools that we're learning about and talking about uh, this week, right? So that's that's amazing, um, and that's how this sort of fits into the greater KubeCon world. Um, so we've defined it. We've talked about how it fits well with Kubernetes, and so that we probably all here have the possibility of doing preview environments. So let's compare the review process both with and without preview environments. So the traditional code review process is focused on a code diff. It, it's for developers, right? A developer typically writes the code, creates the PR, and is going through a developer-focused review process. And I don't think that should change. I think that's great. It, it focuses on making sure that the code is appropriately designed for the system that it lives in. It's If you have style guidelines, you're checking that those match so that everyone sort of code is somewhat coherent, coherent and looks together, that's very important. 
Um, we're looking for overly complex code and, and to see if we can simplify it or if it may be prone to bugs now or in the future. And the two other things that I would mention that I think is sort of a gray area between it, it may be better with a preview environment than it is just with the code diff is that the code provides behavior that functions as intended and that there are tests that validate that expected behavior, right? And that is, that is a whole, there's a whole world of complication and, and expectation there. But it's really hard, I think most people would agree, it's really hard to intuit or know and understand the behavior of your function feature just by reading a code diff, right? Um, you may be able to know how a loop may execute and that those types of behavior, but the product, it's going to be very difficult. So that's where, yeah, you can get some of that from a traditional code review, but I think a preview environment based code review is going to, going to help, going to help. So when you're using a preview environment, you have a readily available hands-on environment. So readily available, I think that's important because there are many times in the past before I used preview environments that were automatically deployed where I would pull down a teammate's branch, do a deploy myself, deploy it locally or remotely, whatever was available to me, and I, and I would do that and I would do the review process there, do sort of the preview environment review process I'll take, talk about there, but I had to, there, was, there were hurdles. I had to opt into doing that. I had to be able to do a deploy, which in some products is not, easy. Some, you know, we've talked about, there's been other talks here where they talk about how some people can do a deploy, some people can't. You know, so you have to be able to do that, you have access. So readily available, I think, is, is super appropriate here. Um, it just happens. With preview environments, it gets deployed and then you decide if you want to use it or not, right? And with Kubernetes and all of that, that's cheaper, that's easier. So you decide if you want to use it or not, but it's already there. You don't have to decide, I want to spin it up, I want to take the time to check out the branch and everything. It just happens. And that's great because we all want to do less work and we just want to reduce friction along this whole process, right? Um, often, preview environments focus on visual changes. Visual, and I'm talking about visual changes to the application. So this is where we pull in some of the diverse role set, right? Um, how does it affect the UI? If you have a UI component, how does it affect the log output? Are your logs noisy? Because you, that's another visual component, I think, sometimes, is that you have to trace logs and, and go through all that. How does it affect, um, if you're using uh, automated documentation, how does that documentation get pulled out? How does it affect so many things? Uh, the preview environment review focuses on functionality, right? You care about the functional aspect. It's not an, an automated functional test or anything like that, but you, you can use the product in a functional manner and redo. Oftentimes people do this in staging, but now you can do it right with your branch. And doing all these things, everyone is invited to the party. You, you have more people now that have the ability to, to provide feedback. They're not going to do a full review. You know, they may not review your code in this, but they could review a piece. And it's done here. And I think that's super powerful and, and provides team benefits such as um, you have a greater role diversity in that review process, right? So content, if you, if you change even small changes in like login screens and document and just documents on your page or just anything, it matters, right? Like we're, we, we sweat the details a lot of times. And so being able to see that and be able to show the end product to someone who cares about uh, words and uh, phrases and all that is great the design of the page, the flow of the page. So product can go in and say, hey, this goes from this to this to this part of your application and goes through all that and they say, yeah, that's, that's how I envisioned it in my mind. And they can do that right then um, just by clicking a few links on the, on the review, right? Um, then development, they get to use it. So if you're developing um, an internal API, people could target your preview environment with their clients and use that. It's, it's up there, it's ready for them to use. Um, and then DevOps. This one is kind of a subtle thing in that with the, I think the advent of all of the cloud deployments and everything, the DevOps and the uh, specifically the automation of getting something deployed, things can break then. You can go through and make your feature, write all the code, and then all of a sudden you can't deploy it in a production-like environment. 
Well, with preview environments, and specifically preview environments that model how your production environments are done, that automation gets tested with your branch. If you can create a preview environment, it's much more likely that you're able to produce a production-like environment. So DevOps is now participating just kind of by the fact that a preview environment gets created, right? Um, they may not have to review the preview environment, but, but any automation for putting stuff into production is, is now quicker. It's just tested right away just by the fact that you created a preview environment. I believe that adding all that, adding the diverse role set, testing all those things, adding the visual changes, I think that promotes ownership. And what I mean by ownership is, um, I mean having, feeling like you, ha you are responsible for your product, that you have a say, and that you are participating, right? And that you're participating in the key role. I think, I'm biased, I'm a developer, right? But I think the development portion of it is, is some of the, one of the key aspects, there's many aspects, but that's a, that's a place where it's being made, it's being developed, it's being created. And so the more people that you can include at that point in time, the, the more responsibility they'll feel and the increased ownership I think typically leads to better products and better teams. Um, we've, ownership gets increased because we've simplified the pattern of engagement. We've included the review and all the visual review and everything right there with the review process. It's something that most people are used to when they, when they develop code. And then hopefully most of your team is, is used to using your application, right? And so clicking the, clicking the link or hooking into that development. And then consistency. So when you are consistently participating in review process because things are now simpler to do and because your role has an opportunity to do so, um, that's just going to promote more and more. So it just keeps turning that wheel of everyone being involved. And then I think critical timing of feedback. So uh, we're all busy, right? Whenever I, typical flow, whenever I do a code review is I will do a code review. It'll go under the normal, let's say that in the traditional sense, this, this flow shows in the traditional model. We'll do a code review. We'll check all the t traditional code diff type things. We will merge. And then that gets into some staging deploy. And then if there's any kind of visual or integration review that needs to be done, it'll be done against that environment, right? My code's already been merged. I already went through code review. If I have to make a change, right, if I need to address that feedback, what do I have to do? I have to go back, either get a new branch or get the old branch, make that change. Then it has to go under code review again, because typically these are enforced. I can't merge at all any new change. And so we've sort of in a way disincentivized actually having that because I have to go through this whole flow again and so we're less likely to, to dot the I's and cross the T's of the visual and the integration review process, right? Because I don't want to have to do this again because I, I don't have time, right? Is it important enough to where I can redo all of this? Maybe, maybe not. And, and that's a judgment call. That may be true, but what if we could remove that? And I think with the preview environment, the typical flow, at least when we're talking about the visual and integration review and and all that sort of thing, it becomes this, right? So we do the code review and the visual and integration review all before the merge, all together, right? And then we merge, and there's no more that the feedback's been done. I don't have to wait for another deploy to get more of that feedback. There are other things that you will pick up, but for the most part, we've, for this part, for this visual and integration review of the actual change, we've eliminated that, right? So we get to do that all once, and one branch, one go. We've, I believe, saved time for, um, the developer, we may be using more time for people that, that ha haven't been part of this review process before. We may be using more of their time because they're participating in more reviews, but I believe that's a net gain. Um, and, and I think that all those key components, you know, the role diversity, the increased ownership, and then just the better use of everyone's time, I think those team benefits to me really highlight why everyone should consider preview environments. It may not work for you, but you should at least consider it because of the benefits we've talked about here today. Um, yeah, that's the end of my presentation and my talk on preview environments. Do I still have time? I know we did different, do I still have time for questions? Okay. And I'm going to,
Okay, so I've got zero votes, but it's the only one up there, so it gets, uh, gets to go. Um, you mentioned the benefits of preview environments for looking at visual changes, but it's also great for getting a feel on interactive changes like a search or browser. Yes. Um, yes, so the, the sort of performance related. There's sometimes, uh, I talked about in the, uh, and I should have mentioned this then, but I talked a little bit about how we look at complex code in a different code review where you're checking that. Well, why are we looking at complex code? I mentioned, you know, looking for things that may be bug prone, but a lot of times complex code is uh, non-performant or doesn't perform as well. And it may show up in a preview environment, especially if you're able to load your preview environment with, with data. With the, the last talk, they talked about how, because they, they were database-based, they talked about adding um, data into the database and so that you could do development and they need it for development purposes. purposes. We could do that here. Um, I think we have one local one. Oh, I was just going to follow up and explain a little bit more what I was talking about. Um, you can also end up with like a UI that looked really good when you drew it and then when you go to like click on something like the page reflows and all of a sudden like you thought you were clicking one place and it goes somewhere else. And so that's another thing that these preview environments can really help you catch. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Thank you, thank you. If you could repeat that for the virtual audience. Yeah, they should have gotten that from the mic. Yeah, so the, the point was there that, that oftentimes when you have, if I get it all correctly, if you have a flow or like spinners or something going in between, if you actually go through the flow of the website and actually visit, you, you may find that you've done something you didn't want to do and that it's going to need a change, right? And you can address that then. Any other questions? Yeah, we have one right here. One right here. Hey, uh, I was wondering if you think this method uh, would apply only to UI environments or also to like, let's say, APIs or uh, command line tools like your preview environment would include only UI tests, right? Yep. So the question is, uh, do you think that preview environments are valuable for non-UI environments like, like CLIs and APIs, that sort of thing? Yeah. Yes, I do. Um, obviously, I think it's a little bit, there's a little bit more um, harder to integrate a test with that. So. I didn't talk much about integrating automated tests with preview environments, which is something you can do. But say you have an internal API, right, that, that the rest of your team uses or even publicly available API, you can go ahead and either run an automated test suite against that, or uh, if I'm providing a new API change to, say, there's like two or three internal teams that use it, they can start using that. They can target it and do whatever you want. Hey, I have a preview environment. Run it through its paces and give me some feedback, right? That's now an option. Um, CLI is the same, you know, any, any, any time there's a client server interaction, whether it's HTTP or whatever, if your CLI has that way, yes. Yeah, I think it's super valuable. I think the, I do believe it's a harder to adopt, right? And the, the benefits are not as immediate as the UI ones. Um, and the role diversity doesn't, as pl doesn't necessarily apply as much, but you are able to involve more teams and give them a, a really, high fidelity environment to, to do their testing. It's before emerge, right? That's better than doing it stage. You can get that feedback earlier and, and not have to wait for that. Yeah, I think so. Okay, thank you. Last question. Uh, hi. So along the same lines, I was gonna ask about the database as well, like how would that work? But I think I get the answer. Uh, okay. It's only used for UI um, uh, previews, right? So um, the question is, if you have lots of database type things or database actions, how does a preview environment help there? Yes. Or, or is it only for UI stuff? Um, typically, the, the, the quickest that I've seen value have with preview environments is for UI based things. However, that's not the only way, right? No, we absolutely, there are absolutely remote uh, development products that allow you to populate data for your deployed environment. So if uh, you, they talked about it in the last talk where they can populate that data. So if there's any type of client server interaction where someone is consuming it, which is almost everything, right? So uh, if you are doing some kind of 
say you're adding a prepared statement. I'm not great with databases. I don't use them a lot. But if you're adding a prepared statement or some change that where the data model is completely different, yeah, you can, you can absolutely model that change and start doing that. It's a little bit more, you, you have a more robust and you have to work harder on creating that preview environment, but it usually pays dividends in so many ways. You can use that now in your development environment, your preview environment, and staging and so on, right? So, so basically mock it out. Mocking it out? So basically mocking it out, right? And then, no, it would yeah. actually deploying it. You would just deploy the real thing and you may have mock data, like fake canned data or a copy of, of actual data from production. Sanitize it, don't do that unless you know your data, right? But that's not a recommendation, but it, it's possible, right? Yeah, you, you would actually deploy that. That's one of the, the, in my definition, that would be fit under that and that it has to be exactly like your production deployment or as similar as possible. All right. Thank you, everyone.